We saw that we can create interactive maps using leaflet, using the Folium package. But in Folium, we saw that we have to define a coordinates or get a list of coordinates from somewhere and then we can plot on it. That's not how we usually work with data. We get data in forms of shapefiles or geo packages or some of the vector data sets. And if we have those data set, how do we plot that on top of a leaflet map? To make this easy, GeoPandas has an API to leaflet, which allows you to create those interactive maps directly from GeoPandas. GeoPandas uses Folium and Folium uses leaflet. So instead of using Folium directly, we're now going to use Folium via GeoPandas. Let's get some data. So we get this data. We have a geo package file. This geo package is a open data format that can hold one or more spatial data layers. It can hold rasters, vector tiles, multiple things. So you can have multiple layers. This one has a few layers inside of them. So we'll try to visualize those layers on a map. We have these three layers. We have the highways, we have the districts, and we have the poly, uh, state boundary. So these are the, the different highways in one of the states in India. These are the different admin regions, and this is the state boundary. Let us see the, so if you have take this districts GDF, this is what the data looks like. We have a polygon layer with some attributes here. And you can read this, but we want to know what does it look like on the map. You can take any geo data frame and just call explore. You just call explore, you will see an interactive map created using Folium that GeoPandas creates for you. So this is a quick way where you did some analysis and you say, okay, I have I want to see my result. And so doing GeoPandas plot, you get an in static map, GeoPandas Explore will give you an interactive map. You can see I got a nice map. I can also click on each of the features and I can see that views. Pretty nice. This is great for when you are doing some analysis and you say, I've done my filtering, I've done some results. Let me visualize this. If it's a geodata frame, dot explore will allow you to see it. You can zoom and pan and see the results. Let's see the, the API for the explore function. So given a geodata frame, you can explore it and it is based on Folium. So all the customization options that you want, you have to go to Folium and say, how can I customize this layer? And you can supply those to this function. Similar to our plot function, we have, we can colorize each feature in different colors. If we give a column, color map, etc. Remember when you say geopandas.plot, you can plot on a specific axis. Similarly, here you can say geopandas plot, you can plot on a specific map. So a workflow would be create a map first and start plotting geodata frames on top. So if you want to create multi-layer map, so I'll create my map object first, which is your M folio map. And then you keep plotting stuff on top of that by saying geopandas explore, M equals the map that you want to plot on. And there are a bunch of other parameters that you need to give. Let's customize some of that. We also have this, uh, when I get this map, it loads on the map. I want to make sure I zoom to the particular map. So I just compute the bounds of that. So I can say, center my map around that. So first we create a figure, create a folium map, and then we say fit bounds to that. So we zoom our folium map there. And once we have that, we can say pdf.explore, M equals M. And this is a key concept, similar to how we always, when we're doing map plotly plotting, we create a figure, plot stuff on the axis. Just don't call dot explore on a geodata frame. Do this extra step, just give you more control and you can now plot multiple things on the same map. See the difference we now, instead of a full screen map, we have a nice small map. So it's easy to navigate. We now have zoomed in to that particular view. And now we have this map rendered on that. We can customize some stuff on that. So we can customize the tiles that we have here. So instead of this, we'll give some base map. So we customize the base map that the leaflet map uses. So we turn it into a, a simpler map. This is a folium option to create that map with different tiles. And now we can use different options. So when we are exploring that, we can now give options. Let's say I want to color this in black. So I get a black color polygons. Now I want to say, I want to change the, the opacity of the fill. I want to change the border width, etc. How do I do this? 
you'll see that there are options here, style keywords. Style keywords says you will be, whatever you give, the stroke, color, weight, opacity, they'll be passed on to Folium and you can use those parameters. So let's give some style keywords here so that we can customize that. And we say, so we say we have this fill opacity or 30% opacity of that. I'll change the weight of the line to be. So this is a dictionary of the parameters that we need. So we give that and now you can see my map looks nicer. It's got some transparent, that border is small and so on. Those are documented here. And again, you have keywords that you want to pass on to different options. So if you want to customize a pop-up, you pass on some pop-up keywords, legend keywords, tooltip keywords, etc. And those will allow you to customize that based on that. If you want to find certain parameters, what do you need to do? You can see, you can say tooltip, I want to customize tooltip. Well, it uses Folium. So go to the Folium tooltip documentation and see what are the keywords that are supported. And then you can do this. Let's render some more data on top of that. I want to re render roads on top of this. So let's see what the roads data looked like. So this is my roads data frame. I've got 6,000 road features that I want to plot. Each one is a line. We'll do some, some more advanced visualization rather than plotting it as the same color. Let's assign different colors. Here we have some state highways, which start with SH, some national highways that start with NH. So I want to create a map where NH are in different colors and state highways are in different colors. So I want to create a categorized map. And I need a one attribute which I can use for categorization. So here I have this multiple attributes. So I say, if the ref column starts with NH, it's category NH. If it starts with SH, it's category SH. So I'll add some one more column, which is a category of those. And the way to do this in pandas and geopandas is you write a function that processes each row, and then you can apply that function on each row and it processes each row. So apply is a preferred way to add a new column or each row in geopandas or pandas, which is much more efficient than doing iteration. So we'll write a function that will process each row or each column and then apply that. So here we say given a row, we'll get the, the ref column and say if NH is in the column, we'll the value will be NH. The value is starts with SH. It will keep it SH, otherwise it's NA. And we can now apply it. So we'll take our road data frame and apply it. We have a specific axis. Axis one will add a new column. Axis zero will add a new row. So if you want to process something column by column, you do axis zero. If you want to process row by row, you access one. And you get a new column. We'll just add it to our road CDF. So we now have this road GDF. We can put it on the same map. We already have a map here and we can now keep adding stuff to it. So let's say I have my road GDF. I want to add it to this. So we'll say dot explore. And we can say, where do you want to explore? We'll say on the same map. So we give the same map. And again, Germany helpfully auto completes it for me from my own repository. <laughs> so you can see it says, I want to style it based on the category column, which is NH or SH. And we have the two color map. It's a categorical, so don't interpolate the colors. Just assign colors, NH this color, SH this color. Tooltip will say, when I hover over it, show me the reference, which is the name of the column. And we give some additional tooltip keywords, which says, when I hover it, you can see the name of the columns will be, you know, whatever was in a data table. We can rename something. So saying ref equal to SH 192. So instead of ref, make it name. So you can rename what your tooltip appears to be. Let's see if uh, this works. Let's run that. So we create a map, rendered two layers on top. So this will allow us to see both of them together. You can see I have two layers. Now if I zoom in, you have these blue colors are all national highways. The red ones are the state highways. You can see as I'm hovering, I get this, the bottom layer also is popping up. So I want to turn that off. I want to say, I don't want the tooltip for this top layer. So I can turn tooltip to false. So I don't want tooltip for the bottom layer. So I, when I hover over it, I don't see the district names. I only see my road names. And now I can see it's a nice map. I can hover over it and it shows the name of the national highway. 
if I uh, hover over a red one, it shows this is a state highway and so on. Since we have multiple layers, it'll be nice to have a layer control, which you can turn on and off the layers and you know, explore each layer individually. So we can, Folium gives you a, a way to add layers. We can say name, we add a name parameter so that we get a, uh, we assign a name to each of the layers. This will be highways. And now once we have that, we can say, I want to add a layer control. So we now have this multi-layer map that we have created and we can save it on our computer and we can have a look at it. I'm just going to save it and show you the final map that we have created. So just to show you that, you know, what you can achieve with a little bit of Python code and rendering this through GeoPandas. You can see this taking a while to download because it's a large file. It is in, encoded all of the data within the HTML file. So you get a standalone map here we are reading data from some geodata frames. Once you read it and render it, they are saved alongside your data as geodesons and they are embedded within your file. So you don't need any external data sources. And that's why you just send this HTML file. It's a 10 megabyte HTML file. But when somebody opens it, they see the full data along with all the visualization stuff that we done. Okay? So you could achieve this kind of visualization without knowing anything about HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. So if your data size is small to medium, you can use this to render those data on top of that. So if you're creating an app, or you are just doing some analysis and you have a few thousand features they want to show on a map, you can do this. As you start adding more features, JavaScript, since it's loading everything into the RAM and it's rendering everything at once, Leaflet and many JavaScript libraries do not rend cannot render more than a few thousand features. So if you have a very large layer with let's say 100,000 features or a million features or 10 million features, if you try to render, this map will crash. Your browser tab will crash. So it doesn't work. We'll learn how to overcome that. There are other mapping libraries that you can use that can go up to 100 million points or 100 million vertices in a browser, and you can explore that. Yeah, so for the exercise here, uh, we want to add one more layer to the map. So here you see that we are having our volume map and we have two layers already. One is for road, one is for districts and we are getting this. And here we want to add one more layer as a boundary, which would be state. So it should look like this. So the color should be blue and you can be, you can just adjust the thickness according to what suits you. So try this one, add this parameter. You will have to add the fill as one because we don't want anything as fill. We just need the boundary so the color should be blue and you can just adjust weight of the line and make sure you add it as a first layer so you add a boundary first then render the district layer on top and then you render the roads layer on top and once you're done you can just call m.save to save the html file on your computer and see how it looks